chopping at the bit, if you would, for an opportunity. I don't know who it's going to be. I, I, it'd be ridiculous. Oklahoma City at American Airlines Center for the first time since December 30th, 2018. Brunson in the lane starts the game with a basket for Dallas. At 31 to start this year against Chicago for his season high, Al Horford in the paint. The 14-year vet from Florida, averaging 14 a game, is on the board. I feel like you got to call him OG Al Horford. Yes. I tell you what, as uh, Richardson gets in the lane, I tell you what, they play like a team that doesn't have anything to lose. So that puts them in position to be successful as a team. Brunson all the way to the rim with that left hand. Oklahoma City's won three of their last five games, but their last game was Saturday, and it was a 30-point loss at home to Denver on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. As an aggressive move by Al Horford to the basket to score. Kleba up top. We just saw him miss a three a moment ago. Number four in the league in three-point percentage. But he gave the ball up to Dorian Finney-Smith, who drives and scores. One of the problems OKC has is scoring. They are rated last offensively as KP uses his size against a smaller defender from OKC that time. He is, uh, he has size, so he may as well use it. 4-3, second year from Arizona State. Lou Dort rattles it in. North hit a big three. Then Burke moves it along. Penny Smith for three, no good. Basically there for the rebound after he just had a two for two trip on the free throw line. And he'll let it fly and hit it. I had, believe that. I, mean, I want to hear it. You want to talk about some some weird research. Yeah. So last year, Lou Dort had 30 points in game seven in the playoffs against you. Both teams down in the 30s. OKC 38%, Mavs 33%. Nice. Dallas needs one to fall. They haven't oh. been getting the threes to fall, so that's the option. Take yeah. it and throw it down, big man. Boomerangs back to him. Oklahoma City has a new 14 to work with. Shea Gilgis Alexander averaging 23 a night now finds himself on the board. The city is one of those, they're one of those franchises like the Mavericks, like the Spurs, like the Heat, that when they decide that Tim Hardaway steps into a three-pointer. Them into the playoffs as a five seed in the West and yeah. gave Houston all they could handle on the first Prior round. to that, all yep. the conversation was, we're going to rebuild. Yep. Yeah. We're going to rebuild. And they made some moves, as you see, uh, Mr. Brunson, because uh, in the past, <laughs> nobody cared. Right. <laughs> like, hey, you're going to uh, right. Cleveland. <laughs> nobody cared. No. They, they just ship you off. They average over 14, almost 15 a game. Johnson leaves it for Kleba, who just pushed it up and scored. Mescal on the pass. Stuck on in front by three. Ball on the floor. Brunson hustling after it. Beat the bigger Mike Mescala. Got down on the floor and wins that loose ball for Dallas. Let's see if they can cash in. Richardson, they can. Today I'm hustling. Yes. He's the Rick Ross. The boss. The <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Trip to the line. It's a two-point Dallas advantage. You no, know, Williams has been effective. He's made a couple of plays for Oklahoma City. Hardaway blows by the closeout of Roby for the big flush. Up, up, and up. Ex Higher functioning offense. Except tonight, unfortunately. Just one for 14 from deep. Corner three made there by Kenrich Williams. Yeah. Player health and performance, Casey Smith, said he probably needs a game off. He is expected, according to Rick, before the game to participate in everything at All-Star Weekend in Atlanta. Missed by Dort. Run out, slam dunk. Josh Richardson. Take it to the house. On the road, just in case something like that <laughs> happens, right? Who knew? Top of the key, rattled in by Porzingis. Bang. Right here in Dallas. Building down the street. Yeah, I was there. I was watching. Horford with the ball. He's the player who fouled Porzingis and put him on the line, and he backs in and scores. That's this year. Yes, that is correct. Well, he played in Atlanta. Shot by Brunson's on the money. That, Often automatic for that's Jackson. That's the only one he's ever missed in this building <laughs> not, was that right there. Not tonight. Mouse in the house here. Kleba, and a trap closes. <laughs> what a great pass that was. And not quite from game one, but almost a starter since coming into the league with the Clippers for a year, and now two years in Oklahoma City is Hardaway with a splashdown pull-up.
Shea Gilgis Alexander steps around, runs in and scores in the paint off the glass. Hardaway Jr.'s 11 off the bench, your top scoring Mavs. That's nice. Oh, we. Mm. Porzingis now with double figures <laughs> with the very nice move. His long arms uses him to his advantage. I don't Maxi play him as well as you can play him in that situation. Mm -hmm. Boom. Runs in the jumper off the Cleveland screen. Jalen Brunson, I tell you what, has become one of the uh, better off the bench players in this league. Second basket for him in the game. He's got a team high seven rebounds to go with his four points. And there is that smooth move <laughs> from that, Gilgis that. Alexander. Brunson looking for an excellent finish of his own on a scoop to the hoop, but it bounced off the heel. Mm -mm. Baisley inside against Kleba, able to finish through contact and a timeout now taken by the Mavericks. 11 years in Dallas, 14 years in the NBA for JJ, playing in Spain now. Yeah, he wasn't, wasn't drafted. What, yeah. <laughs> Over 800 games and wasn't drafted. Nicely done by Hardaway. And those guys like that? Burke with the intercept off a Mavs turnover. Recover the ball back, and is the player who ends up scoring when it opens up for him on the drive. And Burke with it. And once again, Burke to the basket, this time opting for the kick out. Oh, what a drought buster! Michigan to Michigan. Horford operating off the elbow, now backing into the paint. Bumps Finney Smith. Yeah, that's one of his favorite shots, so that jump hook. That bump caught the attention of Rick Carlisle, who was Upset about the no-call. Nice kick. Finney Smith the drive, and the dish to Trey Burke for the corner three. Terrific play that time by Finney Smith. Kleba came back in. Finney Smith went out. Nice pass. Burke flips it back to Porzingis, and now Dallas is finally finding their sea legs when it comes to shooting threes. <laughs> With 2.20 left to play in the third quarter. Hasn't been easy to separate, but they are separating, and they're separating more. Richardson, Drano on the three-pointer. It's been tough sledding, yep. shooting the threes this evening. Nice pass. And Roby upstairs for the dunk, a low lead bounce pass by yep. Gilgis Alexander. Well done. And the Thunder aren't going to have 60 by, oh, maybe they will. 59 on the three made by Shea Gilgis Alexander. With one last chance to add points to what they've done here in the third quarter. Hardaway, and spacing may matter, but that time Hardaway still <laughs> able to score. A drive here by Ty Jerome to score with 2.3. Tough finish. Throw away here by Hardaway on his baseline drive. Going downhill in attack mode is Isaiah Roby. Eight left on the shot clock. James Johnson goes baseline, finds Kleba, hoisting a three, hitting a three. The sweet sound of the string music. Deep three. Mm. And on the money. Damn. Porzingis hits the bullseye, and Dallas's lead is 81-64. And then he does that on the other end, towering over everyone in the paint for the defensive rebound. 16 points, 12 boards tonight for Porzingis. Give it to him. Three more as he hits bullseye again. He's just one of those guys that stays focused, man, when you start talking about Mr. Brunson. Pro. Yes, he is. Good. Drive and score, Burke. And shaping up to be an ending with a palindrome score of 87-78. 18 wins, 16 losses is the record. Lloyd Pierce has been dismissed from the Atlanta Hawks. Wow. 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 Right. I didn't see that coming. Wow. I saw didn't. that coming. I saw that coming. I really? Coming. I, mean, I watched yeah. them play last night in Miami. It was a mess. I, yeah, they have was, met so much talent in Atlanta. I it was like a that, mess. Bro. I still think that he would have got a little bit more breathing room, man. Bro, yeah. I, honestly, I, honestly, I don't think it's his fault. I think it's... But coaches always got to go. No, I think it's upper management, bro. Right? That's usually the case. <laughs> you can't be bringing in these dudes, man. When you got chemistry or you're trying to develop chemistry, you know, you have some of these GMs, right? It, it like take a look at the GM 
before you always look at the coach. You know what I mean? But GMs are allowed to make these mistakes. But you are building something in Atlanta, right? You're getting overzealous, right? Now you're trying to say, oh, we're making a playoff push. Now you're putting all that goddamn responsibility on the fucking coach, and he's trying to groom his young guys. But I think that they feel like they have something, you know, uh, where they can bring in, you know, someone that can get them to the next level, which, you know, hey, it is what it is. But I don't think it's that team. That team does not really have the structure and build to be, you know, a team that, to me, that can challenge in the East. They were in panic mode from the jump, though. I mean, the GM was trying to get something for Trey and and get those guys situated. And then, obviously, the John Collins fallout with him turning down the money and trying to get paid and them trying to figure it out. That's that's, that's bad management, bro. How the fuck? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It it, it it all falls on that. What you think, Lexi? I'm sorry. No, I feel I agree with you. I think most of the issues start from the top, but they're the ones with the power and the money. So, you know, they're going to blame someone. They're going to blame the coach. And um, he's a black coach, correct? Yep. Yeah. yeah. He played with Steve Nash in Santa Clara. I just feel like they're, I mean, this is a whole conversation. And I've been around like a lot of um, NFL players recently because at the facility I'm training at is, you know, a lot of NFL players. So we have, We've had this conversation about, you know, the the representation and coaching staffs, you know, all over sports. And I just feel like as a black coach, you're like, your leash is this big. Mm-hmm. Like you have a young so, team. Yeah. Like you have a young team. They started off really well. Mm-hmm. You know, the, this whole season is weird. It's like a, it's the whole the whole East is a shit spell, first of all. Like all the four through eight, they like all have the same exact record. Like yeah. When, he was like two losses away from falling from four to out of the playoffs. So yep. for them to fire him, like, I don't think it's fair. This is a weird season. It's a weird time. I feel like this is one of those, you know, seasons that you're kind of just like, you know, we're just going to see how it goes. But 